All right. We will call this meeting to order. Want to welcome everybody here this evening. Our city clerk will now take roll call. Commissioner Maxson. Here. Commissioner York. Here. Vice Mayor Doan. Here. Mayor Van Oster. Here. Okay. Tonight, Pastor Melvin Simpson from the First Church of God in Christ will lead our invocation. Welcome, Pastor Simpson, and thank you for doing this. Thank you. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, God, for all your many blessings. It was you, Lord Jesus, woke us up this morning, and God, we was clothed in our right mind. We had activities in our limbs. You took us through this day that we had never seen before. And tonight, as we pray, Lord, we ask you to bless our city, Lord. Bless our city leaders. Touch each citizen. Direct and guide us, God, in the way we should go. God, we thank you, God, for all your many blessings and your goodness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We will now have a review of our agenda. Does anybody have anything they would like to change? Has uh, or we accept it has presented. So I just had uh, a few comments. So or, or uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We're not there yet. Or, no. Yep. <laughs> no I'm this sorry. Is just go, go right ahead. <laughs> yeah. Just do you have any changes My to mistake. the agenda? I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If no, we'll move on to our consent agenda. The consent agenda. Um, consist of the city commission meeting minutes from Tuesday, May 25th, 2021, our second reading of ordinance G-21-03, which is an ordinance adopting an electric rate schedule for electric vehicle charging stations. Number three is the second reading of ordinance G-21-04, which is an ordinance to amend chapter 42 of the city of Coffeeville code of ordinances by adding a new article for the purpose of establishing wireless and wireline infrastructure and pole attachment standards. And item number four on the consent agenda is the 2021 appropriation ordinance number AO-21-11 in the amount of $562,749.84. Are there any questions on any of these items or anything anybody would like to bring out? So uh, uh, now I will address okay. so, uh, <laughs> for uh, item number four, our appropriation ordinance. So out of that $562,749.84, just some of the, the larger expenses out of that, so out of the 10th Street project to Trans Systems Corporation uh, for the inspections, I'm assuming, on, the, on that project, uh, 11449.20 uh, for Olson Associates, and this is on the Highland Road project, uh, 19,931.57. Um, Meriton Health for our health premiums, 39,864. 65 uh, pay out to our, our uh, contractor on the highland and 10th street uh, sidewalk project uh, j graham construction twenty one thousand seventy one dollars and twenty three cents and to brintag southwest which is our supplier of chemicals for the water treatment ten thousand eight twenty nine sixteen Ashplin Tree Experts for our power line tree trimming, 11,120. And Atmos Energy uh, for the uh, new gen meter and the east west meters, 11,194.16. Those were some of the higher payouts within this warrant register. And of course, payroll amounted to oh, 375,292.14. Yes, yep. So that was a bulk of it. Yep. And there was roughly $3,000 in concrete just to start patching all these water leaks and everything, start patching those holes. Yep. So that's going to be continuing. It's expensive to run the city. Yes, yep. it is. 
Okay, anything else? If not, I will move to approve items one through four of the consent agenda as presented. Second. Motion is made by Mayor Van Oster, seconded by Commissioner Maxson to approve items one through four of the consent agenda as presented. <coughs> Commissioner York. Aye. Vice Mayor Doan. Aye. Mayor Van Oster. Aye. Commissioner Maxson. Aye. Okay, moving on to comments. <coughs> First, have comments from the public. Any citizen desiring to address the commission shall be recognized, advance to the podium, state his or her name, and address for the record. Comments shall be limited to three minutes unless extended by a vote of the majority of the commission. The commission does not hear matters involving litigation or city personnel. The Commission does not take action on subjects not on the agenda unless unusual or hardship conditions exist. Citizens may address the Commission on agenda items as they are brought to the floor. Does anybody have anything they would like to say this evening? Good evening. My name is Carla Moore. I'm a teacher here in this community, but I also am the president of PINCH. PINCH stands for People for Institutional and Communal Harmony, and we are here to invite you to our annual Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. Uh, Madam Mayor, we would also like to invite you to possibly um, speak and do the welcome at the ceremony. It is scheduled to occur on January the 9th, we're going to feed the community a soup luncheon starting at 3 p.m. And the program is scheduled for 4 o'clock p.m. Um, local participants, including the Sunshine Band, the um, uh, Sound Wave from the high school, and other people uh, participate. Mm -hmm. And we would like to extend the, the offer for you to come and do the welcome and to attend, if you would, please. Now, we know this is early, but we want to approach you as save the date yep. for January 9th, so there's no excuses that you're booked. <laughs> and also, we know that in November and December, things get busy. Yes, they do. On our Martin Luther King Celebration Committee, we have Verna Sanders. Mm -hmm. We have Al Suddick, and of course, Carlos Bossel, and my name. More. And <laughs> it's more. okay. <laughs> <laughs> my kids still call her Carlos Bossel, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Carlos Moore and myself, I'm Doug Mund. And also, I give a lot of credit to Pastor Melvin Simpson because of a lot of the ideas we've been working on are his. And so we would just like to thank the commission, the staff, and all in attendance here today, and join us as we celebrate the Martin Luther King celebration coming up this January 9th. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for thank the invitation you. very, very thank much. You. And thank you for what you guys are, are doing as well. So, <laughs> Ms. Yeah. Berna wanted me to say, if there's anyone in the audience who can sing, she wants to invite you as well. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that won't be me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Anybody else? Okay. If not, we will move on to our regular agenda items. First, we have a public hearings, special presentations, and proclamations. And tonight, we have uh, Fire Chief Billy Cockman, who would like to come and swear in our new fire fighter, Alex Cross. Wari, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Mayor, commissioners, public, I always love to see it full in the hair. It just makes my day, I tell you. Remember what I do, I gotta turn it a little bit here so I can see everybody, talk to everybody. First of all, I wanna thank the, the commission, the citizens of Coffeeville for giving us this opportunity to bring in a new firefighter. Um, I also want to thank the team that she had helping her train for the last uh, three weeks. She's been through um, pretty much grind, grow, get some, go. She's been going, doing very well. She's uh, proved herself to us, and we're very proud of her. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, her training officer, Matt Dixon, who was unable to attend tonight, so I'll say his name twice, Mac, Dix Mac Dixon. That's what you get for not attending. <laughs> so we want to thank, uh, thank him for his... Uh, full week of training with her to get her ready to uh, protect the property and lives of Coffeeville. With that said, Ms. Alex, if you'll stand right here for me. 
we're going to give you an oath. What I'd like you to do is just repeat after what I say. You can raise your right hand. I, I Alex Wary, do hereby solemnly swear, do hereby solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Look at me, I got messed up. Get some of that. <laughs> so I'm so nervous. The Constitution of the State of Kansas. The Constitution of the State of Kansas. And the laws and ordinance of the City of Coffeeville. And the laws and I will obey the rules and regulations of the Coffeeville Fire Department. I will obey and obey the rules and regulations. Obey the rules and regulations of the Coffeeville Fire Department. Very good. See, we messed up together. That good, yeah. makes it look good. And I will discharge the duties of my office as a firefighter. Very good. To honoring the code to protect life and property of the citizens of Coffeville. According to the best of my knowledge and ability, so help me God. I could add some more if it's not enough for you. <laughs> I would like for you to sign this. This is your oath. You no longer are Miss Alex Wary. You are Firefighter Alex Wary, but you are out of uniform. Would you like to get in uniform and have somebody pin your badge on for you? Sure. Anybody wants to pin her badge on? No, no I think Chief Grimm would like to. Yeah. Oh, it's quite an honor to do this. Thank you, Chief. Thank you for the tradition you have set for us. This is what's going to make you proud. Thank you, everybody. Okay, we have no old business, so we will now move on to new business. The first item is Ordinance S-21-03, which is an ordinance to rezone certain properties owned by Coffeeville Resources Refining and Marketing within the City of Coffeeville. Our building code official, Mr. Matt Conger, will make comments. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioner. Uh, last Tuesday, the Planning Commission met about all the cases for the refiner's expansion. Uh, they approved the rezoning, the conditional use permit, two variances, and all the street vacations for your approval. Uh, mm -hmm. I can try to answer questions you have. Also, Sterling Vance is here with a small presentation if you guys would like to see that. Sure. Sure. He wants to make his presentation. Don't want you to yeah. travel for nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thanks, Matt. Thank you all for having us back Absolutely. again Sterling Vance with uh, representing CRRM in the project um, appreciate you guys having us back here so um, for for the audience who may not be aware we've been working since the last time we were here I think it was uh, I forget the day in September so quite a while uh, we, we've met with the city we've met with the community we've had several different meetings and we really wanted to get feedback and incorporate as much of the comments as we could. And we were very successful in doing that. And so we're, we're ready to move forward. And the big takeaway here is we listened. We listened to you and we heard you. 
and having heard you we made some project modifications where possible and uh, working together both the city and the community we feel like we've got a, a much better project to move forward with mm -hmm. to summarize everything that we've been discussing and coordinating with the city we came up with a memorandum of understanding that uh, you all are very familiar with and uh, really appreciate you guys working with us to, to get there. So I think, I think we're ready to move forward and this is pretty much a highlight of, of that understanding. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your support. So one of the key things this uh, community asked for is we had originally a boundary of, let's call it third and a half street, mm -hmm. that we were targeting to acquire properties within that area. The community asked that we move that to fourth and we did do that and so uh, a question that came up last week was is anybody obligated to sell and, and no no one is obligated to sell but if anybody has interest we also have interest so that's all that means this is the building site uh, we own all that property already and as Matt mentioned, I appreciate uh, all his help and Thomas's help. Um, we own that property, but we just want to rezone it so we can um, get the uh, approvals and uh, paperwork in order to use it as we intend to. And what does that consist of? That's the, the updated site plan. And uh, we, we have approximately 150 thousand square foot building which is really three different sections it's going to be offices a warehouse and some maintenance shops and surrounding that building is pretty much all parking lots the red on the map are alleyway improvements for improved access to the back sides of those properties um, as requested by the police chief and fire chief that was our compromise working with them so they have uh, 360 access to those buildings um, here is the street vacations updated everything in yellow and also includes the alleyways by vacating these certain streets we can have a contiguous build site for the property um, the two adjacent streets along Harmon Park are not vacated but closed and we will be utilizing that real estate as well for the project the key point is second street and sunflower will be the entrance to the warehouse and visitors everything all other access points will be off of first street and there are several in and outs to the various parking lots along first street and this is pretty much just a highlight of what that looks like again the visitor and warehouse access point is the only thing off first street which is again second and sunflower we have a, a variety of utility improvements that the project will do from removing um, obsoleted and upsizing and improving um, various things but nobody's really excited about utilities except <laughs> engineers we think that's pretty neat but there are quite a bit of utility improvements associated with the project and that's just an artist rendition of what the building will look like and if you notice there's three distinct sections the glass will be the office um, where the big trucks are is the warehouse and then the far far end is the the shops mm -hmm. does anybody have any questions no I don't, I don't have any, have any. Yeah. Um, I looking through when I look through the planning and zoning uh, meeting minutes a lot of the questions were answered uh, mm -hmm. as far as the fencing the infrastructure yes. the gap relocation of everything and uh, as you mentioned earlier the, about their obligation to sell there along fourth street so nope those are any questions I might have and like I said you answered those in Great. the meeting to the uh, Planning Commission does anybody else have any questions I, I didn't have a question. I just wanted to comment that the, the it's been really good to work with CBR on this mm -hmm. moving forward as well. And uh, you guys have stepped up and, and answered things that we needed answered, and and it's greatly appreciated. So yes. thank, thank you. you very very yeah. much. Thank you. Appreciate your help. Thank you. I thank uh, you. 
I hope this isn't the last time we see you. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's a whole lot more pleasant this time than the first time we met. And, uh, there, you know, there was a lot of people in the crowd that were upset following that first one. But yes. I think we got to a good point. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate it. Um, thank you. This, this feels a whole lot better. It does. For, for you and us. Yes. So yes. thank you. Happy to yes. be here. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no further discussion, I will move to approve Ordinance S-21-03 as presented. I'll second. Motion is made by Mayor Van Oster, seconded by Vice Mayor Doan to approve Ordinance S-21-03 as presented. Vice Mayor Doan. Aye. Mayor Van Oster. Aye. Commissioner Maxson. Abstain. Commissioner York. Aye. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Okay, the next item on the agenda is resolution R-21-30, which is a resolution to purchase three police vehicles. Police Captain Darren Daly will come and make comments. Mayor, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Mayor Van Oster, Commissioners. Um, this is just a continuation of us uh, replacing, we like to try to replace two patrol vehicles each year. Um, this helps us lower the cost and, uh, and also be able to utilize reliable vehicles on a daily basis. Um, these vehicles do go through a lot of wear and tear. They're uh, ran 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, so we like to continue with the rotation process and uh, we're gonna uh, trade in two of our oldest vehicles for two uh, brand new vehicles. And then we're going to also purchase a third, which will be a used Kansas Highway Patrol vehicle that's fully equipped. Um, <clears throat> you know, last year, this was kind of our original plan last year was to replace three. Um, but with uh, uh, Dodge shutting down the uh, chargers and having to go back and retool it, left a kind of a vacuum so every agency in the country was scrambling to find patrol cars. Ultimately, we had to settle for some SUVs that were a little bit more expensive, so we only got two last year. When we originally were gonna do the same original plan. Um, so now this year, the chargers are back online, they're cheaper, and also with the, uh, uh, buying the used one is also uh, considerably cheaper and also not have to purchase the additional equipment for that vehicle. Um, so it is staff's recommendation for the purchase of two Dodge Chargers uh, the total cost will be $51,975.54 from Davis Moore Dodge in Wichita and one fully equipped used Dodge Charger from the Kansas Highway Patrol for $22,100. Um, we were getting $9,000 trade-in for uh, two of our oldest vehicles. Um, that's what the Davis Moore has given us for, so that's what brought that cost down on the uh, two new Chargers. Um, I would also like to uh, add to the motion the commission's permission to use Purple Wave uh, to uh, sell two inoperable, inoperable uh, police vehicles that are in storage. Um, last year, um, where we purchased the vehicles from, the state contract was a dealership out of Topeka, and it would have cost us more money hauling them up there than what the vehicles are probably worth. So I would like your permission as well to uh, auction those off on a Purple Wave and those funds will go back into the uh, general fund. All right. Okay. All right. And just to clarify, these uh, this is already in your budget for this year. Yes. yes. Now we are now this will we will be going one thousand and seventy five dollars and fifty four cents right. over our original budget, right. and we're going to utilize the uh, police project fund for that drug, remainder, drug and that's asset drug seizure money that we've uh, okay. accumulated. Very good. Yes. Very good. Does anybody have any questions for Captain Daly? How many miles were on the used one? Uh, I don't think I have that here. I know one was nearly 130,000, and I, I know the other one was over 100. But I can't tell you for sure how much. Is that the ones you're trading in? Or That's the ones, ones we're trading in, right, yes. Right. Okay. So for the used highway patrol one you're getting? It'll have 49,000 oh, miles. Okay, on. yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Okay. Nobody has anything else. Uh, I'll move to approve resolution R-21-30 as presented. Second. 
Motion is made by Commissioner Maxson, seconded by Commissioner York to approve Resolution R-21-30 as presented. Mayor Van Oster. Aye. Commissioner Maxson. Aye. Commissioner York. Aye. Vice Mayor Doan. Aye. Thank you very Thank you. much, Thank you. Captain Daly. We appreciate it. Okay, the next item on our agenda is Resolution R-21-31, which is a resolution to approve the task order number three with Lochner for design and construction engineering repairs to the FOD strip at the Coffeyville Municipal Airport. Our Director of Engineering, Mr. Thomas Osborne, will make comments. Thank you, Mayor Commissioners. Uh, last year, uh, or actually be about going on December of 19, we rented out a portion of the airport to a company for storing some equipment. Uh, inadvertently, they got on the uh, foreign object and de debris strip out of our airport. Uh, and that strip is a three inch layer of concrete that's unreinforced. Uh, what they got on it with some heavy equipment, it's, it damaged it. Per the lease agreement and everything, they are re they're required to repair. So that's where all these funds are coming from. This is a task order for our uh, airport engineers that we have to go ahead and get those designs in place submitted to FAA for formal approval so that we can get that bid out and get those repairs made. Um, Lochner was actually the design team that built that originally, so they'll be able to turn that around really quick and get that, so we can get that repaired. So you have to answer any questions. So is the, what's the 35,000 buying us? So that's, that's for the design and the uh, construction inspection. Okay. The replacement, is it going to stay the three inch thick or are you going to reinforce it? It will stay the three inch thick for FAA requirements. We, we tried. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> yeah, we, we, did, we did try. But, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. No further questions. I'll move to approve resolution R21 31 as presented. I'll second. Motion is made by Commissioner York, seconded by Mayor Van Oster to approve Resolution R-21-31 as presented. Commissioner Maxson. Aye. Commissioner York. Aye. Vice Mayor Doan. Aye. Mayor Van Oster. Aye. Thank you, Tom. Moving on, we go to Resolution R-21-32, which is a resolution to approve the purchase of a self-serve AV gas fuel tank for the airport. Once again, our Director of Engineering, Mr. Thomas Osborne, will make comments. Thank you again, Mayor and Commissioners. As you know, we took over FBO operations at the airport as of June 1. Of course, the City of Coffeyville has owned that airport since it was turned over from the government from World War II. Um, but the FBO services for about sometime in the 80s, I don't know the exact year, mm -hmm. have been uh, held privately and, and, uh, and it was, so it was operated privately. We took those over on the 1st of June. Um, as you know, we're working on purchasing the uh, app tanks and the jet trucks as well as a hangar uh, from the current or from the just leaving FBO. Uh, and so one of the options as well that we were looking into and that we found with a really good price was a self-serve avgas tank. Um, so this, this tank would allow pilots. So on the weekends, if there wasn't necessarily an attendant or if they're flying out extra early, they wouldn't have to pay a call out fee. They'd be able to taxi over to the avgas and perform a self-serve operation to fuel their plane. Um, in total, the, the cost for the tank that we located, that we located the tank was up near Kansas City. Um, so the cost for the tank is around $5,000. Uh, it's an excellent condition, good price. It does need some paint as well as the we uh, Santa Fe towing. We'll lift it up and put it on a trailer for the city. So we have city staff who's planning to go and actually bring that down here uh, to try to save, keep the cost down. Uh, this would get the tank on the airport. Uh, we still need to, we'll have to get a pad poured for it uh, as well as we will need to update the uh, software for the actual self-serve part. Uh, that'll come in the future. Uh, it's roughly about 16000 to update that software from the last budget that we got. Um, we are working on a couple of different grant options to move that forward, as well as some, we believe, some of the grants for the CARES Act fund that we've already received may also be able to use for that. So we're, we're still looking at the funding to get that fully into the self-serve, but it would be a, it'll be a great improvement to the airport and a great service to be able to provide. So uh, with your permission, we'd like to uh, purchase the Avgas tank from the KC 
KCAC Aviation out of Olathe, Kansas. You have to try to answer any questions. Remind, say again, how much would a new one of these cost, did you say? The new tank for this size, it was around, I think it was 30 Okay. for the full self-serve. Um, so th this this tank is a 20, 2,500 gallon Abgas tank. So. Yes. So it will require some setup as far as the self-service side of it goes. I mean, like yes, yeah, the, yeah. so it, it'll have a, a machine for the right. everything, but that software, they haven't used the tank for, I think they said five years, and so all the computer software and all that stuff needs to be updated and brought into to the current uh, specs for right. card readers and all that. So that's where the, the large expense to get it. But the, as far as just the tank itself, the tank, we, me and Jared went up there and looked at it in person. Um, it's a 2,500-gallon 20, tank, uh, double wall, so we don't have to worry about putting a berm in it. Uh, stainless steel inside tank, stainless steel piping for everything around it. Uh, comes with a meter. Uh, we'll have to probably replace the fuel hose just because of the specifications, but it comes with the reel and everything there. So we'll. We do so still far. have the capability of mm -hmm. service, so it's not a pressing issue, and it right. also allows us. Yeah. To pursue on the CARES Act. Uh, One in of the, the uh, and coming the next item up, up, of course, is the lighting project. Right. Um, <laughs> one of the good things, if we can get this the self serve tank and then get it up and operating, um, for that next project, we'll have to shut the airport down for 20 days. We're also looking at some improvements and again looking for grant funding on the fuel trucks themselves, just for safety concerns and just make sure that they're in as good a top top working order. That we can to looking at some of the rechassing of those, and so during that time we would be able to serve Avgas for uh, you know emergency. They they can take off on the taxiway if there was an emergency or something like that, uh, so that we'd be able to get fuel to them and be able to change those tanks around to continue to provide service even during that close close time. So well, it looks like pretty tremendous savings. To, yes, to do this. I was going to so, say yeah. even if you factor in like you said you've got to do a pad, mm -hmm. four pad and some other things you're mm -hmm. still <clears throat> Still have yeah, a good the, savings. We, there we felt good the cost. tank was priced ex extremely well, and um, they they had had offers before, uh, but it just didn't work out for of upwards of I think it was 15 just a couple years ago. Um, but they they're tired of it being sitting there in their way. <laughs> they got improvements that they're wanting to do, and it's it's in their way. So they're okay. cutting us a pretty good deal on it. So. Okay. Does anybody have anything else? If not, I will move to approve Resolution R-21-32 as presented. I'll second. second. I'll take it. Yeah, take your take it. Yeah, yes. That's fine. Thank you. Motion is made by Mayor Van Oster, seconded by Vice Mayor Doan to approve Resolution R-21-32 as presented. Commissioner York. Aye. Vice Mayor Doan. Aye. Mayor Van Oster. Aye. Commissioner Maxson. Aye. Okay. Good job on that. One Good more. Job finding a, a really pr a, a cost efficient solution to that. So. Yes. Do we have a crane around here to take it off once we get back? Yes. Yep. We checked and we can lift it with a. I think we could lift it with a, one of the bucket trucks and then we have a mm -hmm. boom truck for the water department that can lift it as well. So very wonderful. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Good. 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 Good job. Okay. One more thing, Thomas. We have resolution R-21-33, which is a resolution to approve the grant agreement with FAA for the taxi runway lighting project. Once again, our Director of Engineering, Thomas Osborne, will make comments on this matter. Thank you again, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, as you rem may remember, last year we submitted a grant to the, well, it would have been in May, we submitted a a grant to the FAA for a taxiway and runway lighting project. Um, this is the formal grant agreement responding back to our, our request to use the entitlement funds, the, the 600,000 entitlement funds that the city has built up over the last four years. Um, this project will replace the runway lights as well as the taxiway lights. It will also add wayfinding signs that are lit and a right now we have uh, real lights on runway 35, but we do not on 17. This will add those real lights to 17 as well. So it's some great lighting improvements to our airport. Um, with uh, COVID the past couple of years, the FAA has actually 
done the last year there was a project they did projects they didn't require a local match this again they are not requiring a local match this is fully funded FAA proceeds uh, the total project cost is the amount of six hundred seventeen thousand five hundred and seventy dollars I'd be happy to try to answer any questions so we don't have to come up no. with the 10 percent that's correct yeah that's okay. wonderful. So these are all grant funds. Yep. yep that's great <laughs> so wonderful it, it'll it'll use all the uh entitlement all the, funds that we have there. but uh, okay. and we'll yeah. start we'll start building those up the for another project in the future Absolutely. as well so okay yeah this has been needed for quite a long time out there as well so it, uh, it's mm -hmm. good yep. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. mayor if there's no other questions i'll move to approve resolution r21-33 as presented second Motions made by Commissioner York, seconded by Commissioner Maxson to approve resolution <coughs> R-21-33 as presented. Vice Mayor Doan. Aye. Mayor Van Oster. Aye. Commissioner Maxson. Aye. Commissioner York. Aye. Good. Thank you. Good Thomas, job, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you very much for well everything, done. for finding that money and <laughs> moving mm -hmm. us forward out there. Much, much appreciated. Okay, our next item on the agenda is ordinance number S-21-04, which is an ordinance establishing a mill levy limitation for library purposes. Our city manager, Mr. Mark Hall, will make comments. Mark? Mayor, commissioners, I'll try to keep this as brief as possible, but need to explain the situation that has led to this request. Um, Currently, the city's mill levy is 53.129 mills. <clears throat> that mill levy, which is associated with the city, is two parts. Um, of that, <clears throat> 45.961 mills is the city, and 7.168 mills is the library. And that is, is the current uh, mill levy that we have now it is the budget time of the year and we received <clears throat> uh, a request uh, from the library it is one of those the first request that we received was an increase to their overall budget by fifty five thousand dollars eight <clears throat> fifty five thousand eight hundred and eighty nine dollars that translates to a request for <clears throat> possibly a 1.19 mil increase. I know as you're aware that the city has for the last two years held <clears throat> held um, the mill levy and we plan to do so this next year. It is one of those that uh, any increases or because of our declining valuation, the city has shouldered the, that and therefore, in 2020, uh, the library's mill levy was 7.11. So it did go up, but the city shouldered that because of our declining uh, valuation. It is with, and that caused concern and red flag <coughs> of an increase uh, of 55,000. So we did call the library and ask to have that explained and we explained uh, to the library that the commission wished to hold uh, the library mainly because we have a uh, responsibility to be good stewards of taxpayers money and at any time that you increase the mill levy that is just more taxes for them to pay so that's why we've held the line so in that uh, there was a second submission that <clears throat> lowered that uh, to an increase of $26,809. Uh, that still translates to whenever we receive the valuation to a possible half to one mil increase. So that still is a $26,000 increase over the previous budget. It did leave a red flag and it did the city requested the financials for uh, the library uh, it is in an effort to understand is where we are at and why that request is made to increase the mill levy and increase the amount in that the financials that were submitted to the city 
it is <clears throat> it is one of those that uh, <clears throat> the 2020 audit showed that the <clears throat> cash on hand was $162 dollars and that's basically petty cash for what's in the drawer it did say that there was a carryover of a hundred and fifteen thousand six hundred and forty seven dollars uh, the uh, in the operating account the fees account <coughs> showed a carryover of twenty eight thousand seven hundred and seventy two dollars <coughs> The uh, capital improvement account showed a carryover of $99,909. This is a total of $243,492 of carryover. It is one of those is <coughs> with that, <coughs> that amount, <clears throat> they were still requesting a, an increase of $26,000 to their budget. So at the start of 2021, based on what their budget request was of $392,000, they started <clears throat> with, which they would collect over a year, a total of $635,931. That does not include a donation made uh, by the Tovey account. That is excluded. That was a donation and that is not included in the revenue. <clears throat> that amount was 228,701 and that is some account donated to them and that is their business. But it is one of those <clears throat> going in, you now had a budget for 2021, not of 392, thousand dollars you had an operating budget that was going to be six hundred and thirty five thousand nine hundred and thirty one dollars we do understand that there is a need reserve you cannot operate on a fine line and you make that but there is a question of and that's what the city staff is is with that large amount with that large amount how much is enough is enough and do we pass that knowingly along to uh, the property taxpayers it is one of those that uh, this would uh, i've kind of pointed out in here we noticed discrepancies in actual expenses we also noted that uh, the carryover was consistently shown as forty-four thousand. It is one of those we have gone through and tried to figure this out where those in numbers don't match. So we went by the audited and what was proposed and the audited we felt was comfortable, which <clears throat> the audit showed and a total <clears throat> carryover including revenue <clears throat> of the Tovey account <clears throat> of 472000 $193. So we backed out that Tovey donation, and that still has a carryover of $243,492. So that was where we led to this. Other cities have. We are home rule. Other cities have placed a mill levy cap on, on the library. It is not something <clears throat> specific to Coffeeville, it is one of those that we have to be good stewards and therefore that's what you see before you that is their current mill levy <clears throat> request <clears throat> based on this current year it is not a reduction it's still <clears throat> at 7.168 <clears throat> so you can imagine that this carryover that we've just discussed of six hundred and thirty five thousand nine hundred and thirty one dollars will continue will continue <clears throat> so <clears throat> it is not <clears throat> that carryover if you did a perfect world would consistently <clears throat> they would have a carryover that would add to the two hundred and forty three thousand four hundred ninety two dollars so that was the request um, that you have before you to help us hold a course with valuation 
the, and the value of mills will increase. So they actually, is, if we turn this valuation and it increases, they will see increases for the same number of mills <coughs> to, their, to their budget. So um, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer that. What was 2019 compared to 2020? Because 2020 we were closed quite a bit. So expense-wise, I imagine their expenses are a lot less. It kind of that makes was, sense why we have a surplus. Well, <clears throat> there was a, a bit of COVID. It is one of those we noticed an increase on cash on hand that basically went from... But expense-wise, expenses were down quite a bit because we were closed. Also, they yes. did roof repair, too, so, I mean, there's yes. capital expense. But this but. is actually based on their budget and what they didn't spend. Mm -hmm. And their budget was 392000 392000 <clears throat> Of course, they'll spend a, a additional less, but salaries were still paid. Mm -hmm. Materials were still purchased. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what we were given and shown is that for <clears throat> the uh, actual two, uh, 2020, even though we were in COVID, uh, 50000 was budgeted and $44,996 were spent. So there was some savings, which you expect. Nobody can be yeah. a fine line, <clears throat> but it is one of those. We noticed uh, there was uh, miscellaneous budgeted at 15000 and only 880 or excuse me, $813 were spent. But salaries are paid, and from our understanding, employees, <clears throat> even though we, the library had to make do like everyone, uh, they were still 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 played in place and not laid off. I hope that answered that. <laughs> All right. I know we have some people from the library board here. If you'd like to come up and speak. My name is Leanne Stein and I am the library director. Um, pertaining to some of those questions you had on the budget, uh, we did try to reach out to you and Stephanie on questions. And matter of fact, this last weekend on Sunday, I believe I sent an email requesting with the library board to meet about this issue. Um, going with your question, what questions do you have about the budget? I can answer some of those questions while we have the, I can tell you that on the 200000 for the TOVI that was donated to the library to use as what, however we wish to use it for, <clears throat> so you can automatically take almost 200 and some thousand dollars out of that, and we're putting that back into our community and into our library. Um, if you have drove by, we have gotten a statue. We're putting it back into the library itself. We're not... And he, and he had said that yeah. you take yeah. that yeah. amount yeah. out. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Now, the fees there. account, that, are, that is monies that we have occurred from fines, overdues. Mm -hmm. um, those are things like uh, copies and faxes. And that money we spend back into that. Like, so somebody lost a book or something like that, and we have to pay another library, we pay out of that. Or um, things like that. Or copier fees and things like that. That is what that money is. So that that is already spe specified, and I can only write a certain amount of dollar line per check on that amount. So what what was the actual budget for fees account? So this for is just account, the, the twenty eight thousand is the carryover, correct? Yes. So what was the actual, actual budget, budget number for that account? The actual budget we usually put it in tied into the one that I send Stephanie for the overall expenditure. Um, that is not counted part of the what, what we request from you. Um, in the tax distributions. Um, the other reason why on the tax distributions we get those, I believe, what, four or five times a year? And usually at the end of the year, we're not exactly sure how much we're going to get um, because of the holidays. And so last year, we didn't hire some people or didn't hire, hire people back very quickly. So that also accounted for why we had such an increase um, in the amount that we got held. Now, keep in mind, we can, the money that's left over, we can put over into the 
sa our savings account, that CI, CIF, I think it's called. And that is to go back into the library for like if we're doing something major, like recently we tipped into that to get a security system for the library. So that, it, that has its rules itself that we can use. We only have a certain amount of percent that we can roll over into that account per year. Last year was odd. We normally, we don't have that much money to tip over into that. It's, I think it's like, I can't give you the percent, but it's like 20, 10 percent or something like that of our total bu budgeted year amount that we get from the city, we can roll over into that. That is a law. Um, what were the other questions you had pertaining to the budget? So there's 71647 and seventy-three dollars difference in the rollover amount mm -hmm. from the forty-four thousand to the yeah, and usually we have forty-four to roll over because usually by the end of December we're not exactly sure how much money we have. We always keep forty-four thousand dollars in there. So this year we did um, push over close to thirty thousand, I think, over into our savings account. So when you get to see it this next year, year you should see that. Okay. The rule of the yes. Toby, but yes. that shows you that by the auditor balance of two hundred and forty three thousand that they started in two thousand twenty one. Now, pertaining to our increase that we're requesting for the next year and the mill mill for the for the increase of the mill levy. That was my fault. That was running off of a draft, and I went off the wrong one. We have already amended it to the current one for the twenty-six thousand, about roughly twenty-five, twenty-six thousand dollars increase. If we can get it, we have to have at least a dollar increase on the amount that we request from the city in order to be, maintain the ability to receive grants through our system and state. That is state aid. That is roughly close to two to three thousand dollars plus our. SCK allocations, which on the budget you'll notice we put down 17,000, but it runs more towards 20,000. So, roughly speaking, um, without that, just a dollar increase to our budget, we would be out of that. Um, and that's close to the amount that we're requesting for you to increase this next year. So, but the reason for the increase was for that we're requesting the increase is so that we can increase the pay for our employees. If you'll notice, um, I sent this to Stephanie, um, our lowest paid person is a part-timer, um, and we have several of them, and they are getting paid $8.42. Our highest full-time, with the exception of the salaried position that I'm in, is uh, $11.85. Now, with that, keep in mind that we do pay benefits, and so when they get paid, that ben those benefits come out of it. It comes out of our pocket. It comes out of theirs, and they still have to make a living. So when you see that they're making around twenty thousand or a little more or a little less, that is where a lot of their money is going. So that is why we're asking for the increase because we cannot. Like you understand taxes, not everybody pays their taxes, and we are trying to make it so that we can support our staff that supports our community in everyday life, um, whether it's trying to find a job or it's a, whether it's a senior citizen needing to sign up for benefits or needing somebody to help make a copy or send a fax or check out books or do online um, digital media or trying to get a state library card or a library programming this summer we have summer reading like we need staff I'm having a problem and it's not just our library with our staff we train and then they go away or they go to another place where they can get paid better I understand that I'm not gonna there's not a probably a way that we can raise it to the level that I think that they should be at but I would appreciate a thought process in that we could at least give them a little bit more in their salaries. Now, the amount that 
we send to the city, that is the amount. You'll notice that it's broken down. The majority of the funds that we ask for you pay for our personnel and our benefits. We even knocked down a couple of our postage because with our career this last year, like you said, we didn't use them as much so we could take part of that, that away. The rest of those, we try to keep the, the same and we supplement with those grants for that dollar increase um, for our budget. It covers those items. That is why we at least need a dollar. I would really appreciate it and the staff would too if we could have your support and our board support in a slight increase in our levy. We are not the biggest portion of your guys' budget and I understand that. But it's the people that work there that serve our community. That's who needs it. So, so here's where I struggle, Leanne, okay? Yes. So, um, with that kind of a rollover in dollars, mm -hmm. why do you need to go back to the taxpayer for more money, right? So, and, and hear me out here, mm -hmm. all right? So, when you look at our 2019 census data mm -hmm. per copy bill, we're at uh, roughly around 9,300 people. Mm -hmm. Our poverty rate is at 29%. Mm -hmm. We can't continue to go to these folks and say, we need more, we need more, we need more. And that's one of the reasons, as a city, we've said we, we have to keep this down, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we've lost, what, $4 million in assessed value over the last two yeah. years, mm -hmm. right? We haven't raised our mill of it. So the city's taking it on the chin for that. We're taking in less money than we did two years ago. And I understand that, but you got to remember that these employees are part of those low-income people. I, and I understand and that, that, but when I'm looking at a $392,000 budget carryover, mm -hmm. it looks but to me like you have the money there already to, to take care of that. And I so, understand that. Yeah. However, that those some of those monies are earmarked, and we can only spend those a certain way. Like even the grants that we get, we can only spend a certain way. When we requested grants last year, we could only spend it a certain way. Like some things could not go towards uh, could only go towards payroll. Some things could only go towards materials. Some mm -hmm. things could only go to certain things. Mm -hmm. There are specific things that we can mm -hmm. only we, use We follow those. the same rules. I mean, yeah. we have the same mm -hmm. issues, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, mm -hmm. yep. I just, I have a hard time justifying raising mill levies when we're, we're continuing to lose population and our poverty rates continue to go up. So mm -hmm. that, I mean, that's where I stand. It's, well, and my thought to you is what we're requesting is like, tw what, 25, 26,000 closely? That. Why are there other areas that are able to increase? So our employees haven't better? seen a pay raise in three years. Mm -hmm. Three years. Yeah. I'd love to give every staff member that's not already getting a contractual, contractual <laughs> raise a raise, but we've held off for three years to try to get the ship righted. Okay. So, what so I, I hear what you're saying about staff and raises. Totally get it. Every industry right now wants to pay <laughs> staff more, mm -hmm. and they don't have it to do. But our, the city staff isn't getting it. So my next question is, the last two years, we have only increased our budget by $1 to get that, rec to receive the, the amount that we need. Mm -hmm. Last The first year we did it, we didn't have to raise the mill levy at all. Last year we did have to for, for the reasons being. My question recently was if we just, if the board decided to increase it by one dollar, would that still raise our mill levy or could we still do that this year? Like if, could we work together? Mm -hmm. Could we make mm -hmm. a way? And we were. And, yep. Yep. and my next thought is, is do we actually have to have an ordinance in order to do that? Because what w our goal here today is to try to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Because I have extended several olive branches, whether it's in the form of a call or an email, and I get deferred to a city person, which is great and wonderful. But we're wanting to hear from you guys, the major decision makers in the end. And that is why we're here. We're wanting to get some answers point blank why our feeling is this ordinance was sprung up on us we did not know about it until somebody happened to be go across the agenda 
Do you understand the principle of us carrying your increases? No, Mean yes. Meaning that if we sit up here and we say, because everybody, most people with almost 30% poverty rate in our town is paying more taxes than they can really afford. Mm -hmm. And if we say, we promise we will not raise the taxes, and then you raise your mill, which raises taxes, and then we have to cover that. So that's where we get stuck in a predicament. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say, if, if the assessed value goes up, which with the CBR project, it should, right? Holding you at that mill levy, you're still going to see a dollar increase because it's a it's a assessment against or it's a tax against the assessment. So and probably a significant. Uh, yeah, increase. exactly. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see an increase anyway mm -hmm. um, because the assessed value will go up. Well, but, and I and I understand that, but you also need to realize that we realize that we're not going to get everything that we're taxed. We know from the last several years we don't receive about twenty to. Twenty-five, twenty-six thousand dollars. We don't receive, it's, even it's though three to six percent. Yeah, what you see in, in, yeah. In, in and I think delinquent tax. I think yes. I accounted yeah. it uh, a while back. It was, yeah. We have in 2017 it was twenty-four thousand. Mm -hmm. 2018 is forty-six thousand. 2019 forty-one thousand. And in 2020, it was 20,000. And the city so deals with that too. I mean, so they're, they're delinquent we, for we us, or delinquent that. for the college, for the mm -hmm. school district. I mean, everybody fights that same battle. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm the point that we want to get across is the amount of our salaries. Where do they compare to other <sighs> positions in the city, in other areas, even in our community? That's the po point I'm trying to make. I understand you're kind of in a rough spot, but. As an employer, I need to try to fight for my employees too. I and guess I, I need it. to yeah. clarify, and that would you have one hundred and fifteen thousand uh, dollars, one hundred fifty thousand six hundred forty-seven dollars by the audit right. that's unencumbered. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, if you wanted to use that, that is <clears throat> on top. Of your budget this year of three hundred ninety-two thousand, so that's there was their question is, you have a hundred and fifteen thousand that's not even in your budget, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you're asking for more, which could be used, the twenty-six thousand could be used to pay your salaries or operate. That is, and if you looked at the total budget. You started off this year, January 1, with $243,000 <clears> that is broken up to capital improvement fees, operating account, and cash on hand. But again, this would have been nice if we could have had this discussion uh, well, and not in this we, area where we either have somebody had, came to our based library on the, board meeting. Based on the information, we have been communicating We've been asking these documents were produced by you. But we're not <clears throat> knowing what you're looking at and what you're questioning well, and that's until what now. We were given your request and we're going through based on what you requested. And we're trying to analyze that based on the information you supplied <clears throat> and the audit you supplied. And that audit says that when you started this year, before you had collected the 392000 over the course of a year, you're still collecting that. But you started with $243,000 January 1 of this year. That's by the auditor. That's the auditor saying that's not including the TOVI account. Because the TOVI, the auditor said that if you include TOVI, TOVI the TOVI account, then you're actually $472,000 January 1. So that was the question is what the commissions asked is you started out with basically 62% of your budget that you requested for 2021 before it even started. Then you're going to collect over the course of the year <clears throat> the 392,000 and when you add those two together 
That means by the end of this year, you should have a total of collected plus carryover of $635,000. That's based on the audit you gave to us by your auditor, Gilmore, in this, that <clears throat> when you say you don't have money for salaries, you have unencumbered operating count of 115000 that is not dedicated to anything. You can pay your 26000 out of that. But the alternative is to go to the public and say, <clears throat> yes, they could pay that out, there, but no, we're going to ask you, the public, to pay for another 26000 And that is, is what the commission is, is dealing with, is sitting there going, <clears throat> how can we increase when you have $115,000 sitting there that's just carryover? in one account you have another 99 in capital improvement account you have another <coughs> uh, 28,000 in your fees account mm -hmm. you've budgeted for that fees account to pay those things but this is saying this is actual money that's available to you <coughs> January 1 of $243,000 of this year so as you collect it, this 392 that you requested, <clears throat> at the end of the year, you would have collected $635,931.07. And out of that, I think that at Library and Good Stewards, <clears throat> that the library can pay your raises that you requested. It is not going to financially hurt you. But if we go to the public and say, <clears throat> we're going to raise your mill levy, when out of that 635 that you only requested 392, why would we go to the public and say, you're going to give them 26 more thousand dollars? That's the tough question. Right now, when you walk away, you could go there tomorrow and give everybody a raise and take it out of your operating account carryover of 115,000. 115,000 and you could take 26 out of that and you still would not <coughs> spend any of this budget this 2021 budget but that's based on your accountant that did the audit those are the numbers which you see <coughs> is sitting there going there's a lot of money that the library has not including the Toby the Tovey thing is out of this. It's still saying you started this year with $243,000, and then you're going to collect 392 over the course of a year. We just are sitting there. What was red flags to us, based on the information that you furnished, is how can we knowingly look at <coughs> look the public in the eye and say, we're going to actually ask you for more money when there's 243,000 that was just carry over. So <clears throat> I think that's what the commission is, and it's not meant to hurt. This is out of 115,000 just in your operating account, <clears throat> that 26,000 that you feel that you need, <clears throat> you can take it out of that. You can take that out. <clears throat> and that would only lower you still will have a carryover next year but that would only lower that 115,000 by 26,000 so this was what the brought about this and that is the question that I think is before is how can we sit there and look the public in the eye and sit there and say there's money that can be had not to hurt the library this is not intended to hurt the library you have $243,000 sitting in an account or accounts that you could draw from. So I'm sorry for interrupting on that. Yep. <clears throat> okay, I'm Roger Gossard, and I'm on the library board, and I have been for six or seven years. And the mayor of, of Coffeeville is an ex official member of our board, and I've never seen a mayor there in seven years. So, and that's okay. You know, we're all busy. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Hall's been to the library or not, or the finance director, and 
we just spent 30 minutes talking about something we should have done a month ago. When our director got a hold of the city manager, finance director said, come and visit. We want to go through all this. It may, we would have eliminated about 45 minutes of conversation back and forth. And, and that's, that's really the point I want to make. Uh, I'm very dissatisfied with the way this has been done and put on the uh, agenda as a late, as a late addition and a proposal to freeze our mill levy. Uh, and we've got 195 mills of the community college, Montgomery County, USD 445, city of Coffeyville. And, and it seems like we're the library. And when, just on the face of it, when you look at it, it seems like we're a really soft target. And now, if all these other people would freeze their mill levy, we should do that. We should all freeze our mill right. levy. I I'm agree. Not so right. Right. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That's what we're doing. Yeah. I'm opposed, That's what we're doing. Yeah. I'm, we're not. I'm opposed to y'all freezing ours and getting and giving us twenty six thousand less, which is how much more we're asking for actually. Uh, in a sliding we're not giving you twenty six thousand less than you got last year. No. Yeah, but I'm no. right. I'm opposed to that, and everybody else just spends whatever they want. But we have no control over the school district, well, or the I college, or the finished community college, or any of those. You have, you have right? control so, over yeah. the forty six mills of the city of Coffeeville. That's, That's right. Correct. We are controlling the fire that. department and the police department well, and the water, water and the water, sewer water. and That's the right. electric. That's and, right. They've all tightened their belts and cut their. They have. That's right. That, that's, that's right. Good. Okay, now, what I don't want us to do is to vote to approve on first reading this proposal. I want you to send and direct the, the city officials to come to the library, sit down, go through all this. We've been working on our budget for three months. If we'd have known this was coming, we could have we could have fixed this. Mm -hmm. But I can't fix it in one night. We didn't know until we received the request. Well, but, right. um, and we've but, been asking for information to go through this request. Okay, now since we're going we're to argue back okay, and forth no. some more. If you were to come to meet with us, then we'd all know what was going on and we could, have, we could resolve the problem. I'm asking you to put it off and put it back on the agenda next month after you've discussed it with us mm -hmm. and then vote on it. And however you vote for it then would be great. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't care. You're the commission. This is, no, Matt, no disrespect, but this is from your auditor. And this right here has your total cash. But, but did you go and talk to us about it? No, but what Well, we're then why didn't you? Because we were trying to iron this out, what's going on. Do you, you ju Judge, do you, do you, did you know that there was such a large carryover? Yes, I think so. Okay. How many audits have you seen? A lot, a lot of them. A bunch. I'll be a bunch. bunch. Yeah. <laughs> Are they very important? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're huge. <laughs> you stayed awake during the audit presentation. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Who I've been did? through. I've been through a ton of them. So I've yeah. yeah. six years on the college but board. I was on the commission. They four just years take a piece of paper and it just starts. You know, it's yeah. all. They turn it out. It's like a mimeograph thing. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. They fill in the blanks. If, if that if that wouldn't have happened, you guys would have known there was such a large rollover amount, and we wouldn't be here today. I know, but if you would have talked to us about it, we wouldn't be here today because we would say we would have fixed it and sent you a new a new proposal, and and we're in business. Yeah. So what difference would it make whether this was passed tonight or a month from now? What difference would it make what? If this ordinance was passed tonight or a month from now. What difference would it make to the outcome? So we could have a chance to work with you all to, to figure it out and do it the way it's supposed to be. Well, besides, we have to raise it by. Well, and that's fine, right? I, I mean, know, that, your we, a dollar's not going to raise your mill levy. No. Uh, yeah. The yeah. other, there's. A, I, I understand mm -hmm. it, but or that doesn't so you can change get those your mill grant levy. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll say one more thing, and then I'll sit down. The thing that really ticked us off <laughs> as a board, the library board, or did me anyway. This email that went from the city manager to one of the commissioners. And it basically said the library board needs to understand the difference between wants and needs, and they need to find ways to resolve their 
needs. By some other means besides being lazy instead of finding alternatives. And he basically said we're lazy, we didn't find alternatives, and we didn't know the difference between wants and needs, and I'm telling you we do. We're very frugal. Okay. In the last four or five years, we sent back $131,000 we didn't spend that was in our budget. Right. So, uh, when so you start calling people lazy. Table you know, this and give them a chance to sit down and discuss, kind of rehash out what we did here, but kind of that way everybody's satisfied that you you know had a voice in it. And I mean that that's what we're missing in this whole deal right here. I think because they wanted to at least have a face-to-face -face meeting to voice their concerns because the numbers didn't really say what they were meaning. I have one question. May I ask yes. my question? I'm Sue Rajinsky. I'm the treasurer of the board. Um, it was my understanding, and I could certainly be wrong on this because I don't know Kansas statutes, but it was has always been my understanding that the city did not have the right to right. cap our mill levy or to adjust our budget. This is what I've been told, and I, I, don't, I have no I idea if it's true. I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I understand. I understand. Yeah. So I think that was part of our questioning to mm -hmm. you, too, and in the research that I did, that appeared to be true when they were talking about frequently it was county libraries and I know we're not considered that we're a city no. library so some of the information that I got may not be accurate but most of it said that the board set the levy and there again we're not that versed on levy and budget so I'll tell you that right now so we had no idea what this was going to do to our levy which you probably I mean property values we don't know that I didn't know that I'll speak for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. <laughs> none of the entities do until you get your assessment, assessment value, right? Yeah. yeah. We right. don't know what yeah. it's going to So be. that's our biggest thing, I think, our biggest worry. We were questioning how, that's why it came as such a surprise to us, that you were capping our levy when we didn't think you had any, not that we were doing it intentionally, certainly no. not. No. We right. live no, here. No. We pay taxes. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so we were just surprised. and. We so were very the, surprised that it came up, and fortunately, we did see it on the agenda, or we would have been even less happy than we are today. So. Just to answer that, and okay, it good. Is, we are a home rule state, and cities are home rule, and cities can set a cap home. on a library. It's called Prairie. home rule. It is one of those that, in that, in other cities, we are not the only city that is has set a cap on a library. Okay. So, I, I, I've never and, heard and the I term know. home rule, so yeah. I don't know that. Okay. But <laughs> it, it is, and, and I think there's a misunderstanding, <laughs> is, and, and rightfully so, because yes, to go through this is, I'm not accountant. I don't think, a lot of us in our walk of life are not accountants. This is, is trying to sit there and make aware that <clears throat> based on the audit, and I know I, I, this wasn't, it was trying to help and point out that you have $115,000 sitting there that if all you need is 26000 you still will keep the rest of that money yep. for as they go on. And that's what I mean. It's not hurting. This is just money that is accumulating over time. See, my, my understanding of that, and again, I'm just going to speak personally here, mm -hmm. even though I'm the treasurer of the board, don't take that to mean anything more than mm -hmm. that I come in and look at the bills. And, I mean, I do pay attention, <laughs> but I don't do the audit, trust yes, me. Uh, my understanding of that was that a lot of those funds were encumbered for funds that were used for specific things. And I, can, I don't know, again, like Roger said, how many of us pay that much attention during audit? I'll, I'm right there with him. But I thought that some of that, when it was capital outlay, you know, my experiences have been that you only used it for certain things, and salaries were pers were not one of those things. That's just my understanding. And, and my that understanding. is rightfully so. You do have your fees account yeah. in this, but you're in your operating account. You have one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars that was there at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And that can be used. And that's counting the carryover that we've always carried over, which we carried over more this year than usual because we had fewer expenses as we went along. I know as long as I've been on the board, and I think I've been on longer than most of these, we always carried over 44 because the next payment from the city was 
coming in later and we had to be sure we could pay all of our bills Absolutely. that come in the end of the year and you know you yep. you guys all know that yep. i'm sure and that's why we carried over but we have been carrying you, over you, more i didn't know rightfully that. so rightfully that's so because the, you sit fine. there and you nobody can operate in a on a fine line. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody it's just can. really important that we get at least a dollar or we lose out on $25,000. Oh, absolutely. And that, that makes that's sense. We yeah. understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. why and my concern is mm -hmm. I don't know if you approve this, if that does away with that, that will do away with the dollar because it'll be the same as before as last year's. That won't be the dollar increase, which is all we've increased it well, for Well, so actually years. when you when you file your taxes, you're filing for a amount of money not the mill levy the mill levy is determined by the assessed value so you're saying we want this many dollars right and then once the assessed values come in that's when your mill levy gets set yes mm -hmm. right so the, so sort of you, you would that. turn around and say okay we last year we asked for this this year we want one dollar more yeah. right that's and then all. your mill levy will fall where it that. falls within, yeah right? that, that, so, that was yeah. very confusing to yeah. me yeah. thank you so yes. thank you thank you sir. yes I'm Karen Rittenhouse and mm -hmm. I'm on the board too. Mm -hmm. And I think what I see here, once again, is the line of communication. I mean, Leanne sent our budget in May the 11th. That was a month ago. And she said in her email, if you have questions or you want to discuss this, let me know. And she heard nothing. And as Roger said, I want to reiterate the fact, if we had a commissioner attending our board meetings, you would know where our money goes. I mean, we buy books. We buy all the supplies for that library. Mm -hmm. Books are mm -hmm. not cheap. It takes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Computers are not cheap. It takes a lot of money. And I understand that. Karen. But I really, I really do. think yeah. you if someone from the there. city commission would attend our meetings, then you would know where our money goes. So I do read your meeting minutes. I do um, too. You know, they, they come in our packets, right? And I keep up on those. Yep. Except I don't think I've gotten for May. I guess. Have I you got? Just came. Months, so the it just came? Was okay. <laughs> uh, this was submitted 510. This was, if we weren't working, this is submitted to us 6-2. That's 6-2. So we were just getting that information after they adjusted down, and if you look at the date at the top, mm -hmm. it was 6-2, okay. and they had a special meeting. It okay. is one okay. of those that we have asked, and, and I just want it so we can be <clears throat> not throwing rocks, but when we say that the city hasn't been. We've been asking for clarification, and I've got <clears throat> uh, I've got four audits here that was sent. We have been communicating, and I don't know if she has not relayed that, but <clears throat> we have four audits that we didn't just produce. Those were sent by the library. <clears throat> I've got dated 6-2, and today is June 8th. So we've been in a communication just as recently as 6 2 with new information sent by the library. Well, I do know that, of course, Leanne has, has only been at the library, what, two years? And she did not realize that she needed to send you the audit. Well, and, and no, that, that's just gathering yeah. information, but we have been communicating and we are still waiting for information as that was sent to us 6-2. So it wasn't like we ignored the library since May 10th. We've been in communications and giving us information. <laughs> Is today the 8th? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Six days ago. So it hasn't been where the city has not tried to communicate. And that's what I just want to make that clear because staff is trying to communicate we are trying to understand this. There are financials, and we've asked for more information. <clears throat> but we have communicated that. She has submitted to this, and it is not a question of <clears throat> <clears throat> staff hasn't communicated, because six, two, six days ago, we actually received a new budget that was going down. 
So we're analyzing what she's being to say, and I want to commend our finance director because we have been communicating with her. But to say that we haven't, so there's your document. For clarification, I have been in communication with staff. I have asked for communication with you or Marie, the mayor, or even the past mayors, and I get deferred to Stephanie to answer. And then, then there was one email that said, if there's any questions, Mark and I will get back to you. The only question I had was audits. We did not know that you were thinking of this ordinance that you that is the communication. Well, and that's, I can understand. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Um, I'll let you. Can we, can we, we clarify the the whole ordinance just for my sake? It doesn't <coughs> freeze. It there does. Now. It, it does. just it sets it according to ours. If ours raises, then theirs raises, correct? Right? Well, the mills will, if valuation goes up, they'll automatically right. receive right. more money. That's right. correct. It freezes those but does not deny the right each year for the library to come in and request a change of the ordinance. But to say that it will be attached to our budget, it will say that this is 7.168 mills, which that's what the mill levy is this year. This is what it is, unless the commission so by ordinance, wishes to change that as we go on. So from a planning standpoint, it gives mm -hmm. them a number that they can plan to every year for their budget. Yes. But one dollar is not going to adjust yes, your mill levy up or down it's one way or the other. It did last. Yeah, I highly doubt that. Yep. No. <laughs> yeah. I, I highly doubt that. Last year, the city covered that. Because the valuation went down. Right. They were going to lose several thousand yep. dollars, right. and the city covered that. And that's what I say. We lost $4 million in assessed value. So as a city, we lost, what was it, Stephanie, 50 We've actually lost an average of $100,000 in right. revenue by holding the mill levy. A absolutely. What's the desire? Uh -huh. I, I tell you, my, my desire is to approve this ordinance. But I'm, if people want to table it and, and discuss it more, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. I just think that uh, more discussion doesn't change the outcome. I say, I doubt it yeah. change the outcome. Understand about your employees. Everybody's struggling with Everybody employees right now. Yeah. So let me ask you this. There's there's over a hundred thousand dollars in there that you weren't aware that was in there. You took the twenty six out of that. Tell, tell me about the great the the need of raising a dollar. The raising the dollars just so they can qualify for the grants, right? right? Yeah. 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 But you have much more than that. In but keep in mind, if our staff raises, that's only good for hypothetically at the same rate for four years. So after four years, where are we going to find funds to cover any kind of cost of living? Well, same as everybody else. I mean, yeah. 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 The cap, now, the cap can be petitioned. You can come and ask for more. Yeah, you can approve. always come ask right. for more. But That's what it says in there. To... But I don't think we answered your question about the dollar. SEK require SEKL, the Southeast, they require that you raise your budget by a dollar or they think you don't need it. 
Okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. Oh, what, the way they word it is an increase in your budget. Right. Right. And all right. we've ever done is a dollar. Yeah. But that's one of their guidelines for getting their grants. I think the last time we did increases because of health payments, and it. Mm -hmm. I and you, and and you can't take that raise in a dollar out of the surplus that you weren't aware that no, you had. You have to show that in the budget that we submit that we're submitting Spend by for a dollar. A dollar. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. that, and I don't know why. Well, well you if that ain't government for you, I don't yeah. know what is, right? <laughs> yeah. That's rough. Yeah. 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 So that's all we've done. We've always, for the last several years, we've just increased yeah. a dollar. It says on there. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. That's right. And then if you want to increase, the city commission's intent is to hold the line. And if the library board wants to increase the budget request, they would have to come before the commission to do so. Yep. So that's, that's all. That's all that would have to be done. Discussion? What would you prefer? I, uh, I feel like we've communicated here. Probably not the best approach. Um, I agree. Communication. Um, we have been communicating. I think there's, there's, there's multiple errors here. We weren't quite aware of the amount of money that was actually in there. Um, I feel like you could raise it a dollar and, and that it wouldn't be a raise in the mill. Um, I, uh, I I understand your guys' frustration. I really do. I don't know. I don't know that I can. Let's say I'm just hypothetically <clears throat> the we have just and usually we see this June first the evaluation, which it was slow this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now, if based on the mill levies that are at the current out, the city has traditionally lost two hundred thousand dollars each year. So, compared to nineteen, we're two hundred thousand dollars less than that. We have shouldered. Uh, we have shouldered the libraries' would-be losses in the city. Those were larger amounts, but what we have this year is projected, and help me, Stephanie, is the library, based on the current mill, would lose $1,000 or $2,000? $2,000. That is some that I think that the city could shoulder. So if they submitted the three, they still would have this almost a quarter million dollars they would still have that in reserve mm -hmm. but if they raised it one then the cost to city to cover that raise would be roughly i mean one dollar mm -hmm. would be two thousand dollars <coughs> and i feel that is something that we could do it's justifiable it's justifiable So how would that work now? Would we resubmit? Um, well, you would just raise it a dollar. Basically, dollar you again. you could copy what your submission was last year. With plus a dollar. With plus, plus a dollar. dollar. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Twenty five thousand dollars. Right. Uh, so. I. I will say that it will, the city will have to uh, <clears throat> their mill levy will fluctuate and bounce a little. It will. Okay. Yeah, it will. It's but it is one of those if they show that they increased it is and it's mill levy not mill levy sensitive. Mm -hmm. Um that's what they would submit. They requested a dollar more. And it is one of those, <clears throat> we could still hold it theirs, and we would shoulder the cost of lowering ours mm -hmm. to cover that. that. 
Well, so the, the key to all of this is fixing the assessed value, right? So, and, and let's say and the CBR what, project will go a long ways towards that. that that's we correct. have a, an article coming up next on, on housing mm -hmm. that will help that tremendously as well. So that's what we're There's working for. Very for, good right? news yep. in the yeah. future. Yeah. It is, yeah. and it, just for the same. And I give an example because county, um, county gets all of the county, all the tax levy for the whole county. The college gets half of the county. Mm -hmm. so and then uh, the school gets a part of that outside the city limits. The city, the city only gets to tax property taxes within the city limits. That's it. We don't go outside. <clears throat> With that, we have seen a decrease because we're held within the city of actually a decline of $100,000 less by holding the mill levy because valuation of houses goes down. And normally a city would raise the mill levy to cover that loss. But the city commission said we can't do that because in a sense you're taxing people more. <clears throat> the thing is, is that <clears throat> with this, even though our valuation goes down, we'll say the college and for the same mills, the college, the school, and this have actually received 300000 more dollars because they get this bigger piece of this Montgomery County pie. What we're seeing, and you can imagine CVR, they're not in the city limits. So we've never, we've never received taxes from them. Even though they're, you could throw a rock and hit them, we have never got property taxes from them because they are technically outside the city city limits. Now, CRNF and some of the other operations are in, but this big building that they're going to build in this big warehouse that some say is going to be $40 million, and that includes labor and construction, that will be taxable. Now, we might see, and I can't promise, but for that same mills, we might be like the others and suddenly go, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> look what we got. Mm -hmm. And we didn't even have to do anything and raise the mill levy. So that is the good news about what happened with CVR going forward. And that is the benefit in the future. It is just right now, you, the people of Coffeeville, and I know you all feel the same way. It is, this is not meant personal, this is. We can sit down, and you can. We can sit down with Gilmore and whatever it's called, the accountant. Yeah, we can sure. sit down there and have them explain that <clears throat> you're 26, that you're needing, <clears throat> take it from this r reserve. <coughs> and you've got still a reserve. So you're still getting your money, and you still got a reserve in case you need more. But it is, we get, they'll sit there and explain this is available and doable deal, and you'll still have reserve. <clears throat> it is broken up, and like I said, the 243,000, it's kind of broken up in four different ways. And you still got, which, you know, is for books and materials, the, what was it, Tovi, Tovi? The Tovi thing, that's outside of this. So you'll still be, I want to say for the future, because what you budgeted, <clears throat> we always, and that's a terrible thing, because you're looking at a budget, what you're saying will be at the end of 2022. And here we are in the middle of 21. So you're looking into that crystal ball that's going 18 months from now, this is what it'll be. So we do have, and I don't want to say fluff, because everybody sits there and goes, oh, you're putting too much. But we can't sit there and be so tight that we're wrong. Because if you have no budget authority, how can you operate? Yes. So there still will be this little surplus that's going on because, you know, like you've showed in your account, um, I think it was we budget, you budgeted $50,000 in material, and in 2020 you only spent forty four. So your budget of 392000 was as if you were going to spend fifty, But you only spent forty-four. So there's $6,000 that 
that you're going to have in your pocket <clears throat> to spend. And that's why I mean, as we go through this, those things are adding up. And that's why you have this 243,000 thing <clears throat> is you can still tap that. That's your money. That's your money in the bank. That's your money. It is broken up, like you said, specific on certain things, but you got <clears throat> in operating, which pay payroll in this is is in you have hundred and fifteen thousand dollars and that number in a perfect world if you didn't spend it will grow next year but if you tap a little of it you'll still you might spend twenty six thousand of it but you're probably going to get by the end of the year ten more back so that is is going down the road you'll actually that'll increase when we get done to this year It'll actually be bigger because we can't <clears throat> deficit spend. No, so, no, and that we is. We have that option. <laughs> we, you know, so and, and I'll tell you what, why don't we, um, we just, well, what we really do is let's just make it, I mean, it depends on what you all want to do. If we make a motion to table it, it puts it up, and then you resubmit your budget with that dollar increase in it. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, does anybody want to make that motion? Yeah, I guess I will. <clears throat> that will move the table, the ordinance S21 04, uh, to the next meeting. Okay. Motion is made by Commissioner Maxson, seconded by Vice Mayor Doan to table ordinance S 21 04. Mayor Van Oster. Aye. Commissioner Maxson. Aye. Commissioner York? Aye. Vice Mayor Doan? Aye. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't say we've been frivolously and we're lazy. No, no, no. No. Okay, we'll move on to resolution R-21-34, which is a resolution to approve USDA 523 Mutual Self-Help Housing Technical Assistant Grant Application. Our Director of Housing, Charlotte Brown, will make comments. Mayor, City Commission, and City Staff, all of that's here. Um, today is just the resolution for the application. That's all that's before you. Um, hopefully, maybe in six to eight months, we can help out with the mill levy. So if you want to go ahead and sign off on that knowledge, then we can do that. But um, sh all you're signing off on is saying that should we be approved and successful in the program and approved for this program to bring to Coffeeville, that we'll um, comply with the requirements of the program. Once um, we hear back from USDA, if we are successful in getting the monies here to Coffeeville, then we will formally bring the whole program to you and we'll explain everything down to the cost of the nuts and bolts, um, but not the lumber, because I don't think anybody can explain the lumber yeah. right now. Yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, um, and then we'll ask for final approval of the program itself. But tonight, the resolution is just for the application process. Um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Do you know, do you have a timeline for USDA as far as their approval process? When do you think that would occur? Right now they've told us um, they're fast tracking everything right now. We didn't even have to go through the pre-application process. Um, it's usually around 30 to 60 days um, that we, we hear hope something. We that is for mm -hmm. the approval. Usually this process takes a year. Right. And of course COVID and then the lumber prices and, and steel. So it has, but now that they would have the information, if you mm -hmm. went forward, it would, we hope to hear something in 30 to 60 days. But they have fast-tracked it thus far, and we would be the only um, city in the state of Kansas to have this program. So okay. they're trying to get it to us quickly. Okay. Sounds good. Very, very good. It's a, a good thing work. for coffee. Yeah. Um, the whole city staff that's here in the back right, row so has done a lot is, of work. This is very well presented. Thank you. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Thank you very much. I make a motion to approve resolution R 21 34 as presented. 
Second. Motion is made by Mayor Van Oster, seconded by Commissioner York to approve Resolution R-21-34 as presented. Commissioner Maxson. Aye. Commissioner York. Aye. Vice Mayor Doan. Aye. Mayor Van Oster. Aye. Okay, moving on to our next item, we have our city manager's report. Uh, Mayor, commissioners, I just want to thank you for that mm -hmm. approval. I will say and commend, um, you know, not only Charla, um, Matt, um, uh, Thomas, uh, everybody has been working to get this, and there's been travel involved, even though it has been COVID. It is one of those that just as soon as they were getting answers from one supplier, then the supplier and I sit there and said, no, we can't furnish this. So it's been some setbacks, but they've never given up. Uh, it's gracious. They got developed a relationship, which you will hear more often if we're successful, is Little Dixie. And these have, this is the oversight arm of the USDA. They will deal with us uh, more directly. USDA will have a presence uh, down here coming from Topeka. But I just want to commend them to this is, would be, I want to say, the catalyst of the ho housing program. It would step out and do great things. But then there's other things which I know uh, Charla, Thomas, and Matt are working on to come to the commission for our programs that we would and be for consideration of the commission. Um, that will come in the very near future. It is one of those that we look at that it is, it will snowball. The first years, yes, we're not going to go out and build 40 houses. <laughs> <laughs> but it is getting these things in place to set up Coffeeville to win. So I want to do a special thank you to them for their hard work and, and getting this done and what a great gift. The other is, is all the departments, um, we're, we're working, um, you know, things are full blown. I've had some questions is, and that is we're patching. We, we we're working on, uh, put it on. I don't have a final date yet, but on a, uh, what we're doing with sunflower. Um, but I know today out driving around, they were over by, uh, uh, gosh, would it be up around 2nd? No, it would be 4th Street. 4th Street, they were billing in and trying to do things. And so that's going on. Uh, we still got projects. We still are applying for grants. Um, they're out there working. And, and, of course, we're getting the humidity and the heat. We've been pretty lucky this year. But I want to commend them for all that they're doing to make Coffeeville a great place to live, work, and play. And I know that's what you want, but <clears throat> I'd like to answer any questions that you have um, that I possibly can. Touchdown. Okay. <laughs> Down to comments from commissioners and staff. Anybody have anything? Thomas has something. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get enough room. Yeah. So I just wanted to, you know, last commission meeting we were discussing with the weather and that we were holding off on, mm -hmm. on the grass. Well, we've had a week of absolutely beautiful weather. Stuff's yeah, drying yeah. out. So we are starting back up sending grass and weed letters. So just want to let the... Uh, public know that's watching that that's the, we are kicking that back off so you know that's one of the things that we it's want to, we want to strive to do is make the city of coffee look as good as we can and that's one of the one of the easiest things to do but one of the things that a lot of people just it, they, they don't think about it and so they you know, it's been a real challenge to, to yes. keep up with and so, and so mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm, I'm glad for the reprieve in the rain <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah so so but yeah, everything's like I said. Everything's been drying up, and I just wanted to make that formal announcement so that that way 
when somebody's like, well, I thought they weren't doing anything. Well, yeah, we, yeah. we have started. We had a great week last week to kind of dry things out. We still, in the, I mean, there's still places that hold water today, mm -hmm. so we, we get that. But that's uh, as far as a majority wise, we, we're going to be back out there operating. Uh, we do work with people on a case by case basis. If there's an issue, call us, communicate with us. We're happy to help, help work with somebody. Just call us up and say, hey, my mower broke. I'm trying to get it fixed. You know, we, we can work with people on that and say, okay, well, let's, let's just work along and get that. And, and I thank you so. for that. I, I think it's very important from a code enforcement standpoint that we be seen as an assistance to folks and not not just a hammer and, right? that, and that's so, that's one thing yeah. you know a lot of people that will say you know you're, you're on me all the time it's like well call us communicate with us we're we work we'll bend over backwards to try to help you take care of the problem and instead of us having to do it and then tax you on top of that so very important thank um, you yeah, that's all yeah. that's all I have. So, thank you thanks thomas thank you anybody else have anything so I just I wanted to mention so this last weekend in Coffeeville, if if you couldn't find something to do, shame on you. I mean there was <laughs> so much activities going on, and uh, so of course uh, being a spouse of somebody on the Midland Theater Board, uh, <laughs> we had the uh, premiere showing of the Death Alley movie, which is a, the new telling of the Dalton raid. Uh, I want to thank the school district. For allowing us to use their auditorium to screen that in it, it ended up being an absolutely wonderful venue to do that with uh, we we got to meet the director producer of this movie his name is uh, nick barton just a wonderful man uh, he come up here from dallas he actually was born and raised in great bend so he's very familiar with kansas and he was familiar with the dalton story it was definitely a different telling of the Dalton Raid. Um, it was from a, a totally different perspective than what you would normally see, uh, but it was a very well done film and uh, just a really nice guy. And so um, thank the public for coming out and supporting it as well. I think we had a little over, in the three showings, there was a little over 400 people that came to see it. So uh, it was a well attended and uh, a, a very nice event. Uh, I want to thank Lisa Brooke over for putting on the uh, Comet Camper uh, rally up at the, at the Air Museum and the car show, and, and that was very well received as well, and, and thank them for their efforts in that. Uh, there was a uh, swine show out at uh, Walter Johnson, yeah, uh, a memorial swine show, and man, I couldn't believe how many people were out there. Uh, there was a ball tournament going on out there. Uh, KGGF had an auction out at the city rec. I mean, if if you couldn't find something to do Saturday, you weren't looking very hard because there was there was plenty to do. And it, there are several weekends coming up that are the same way. So uh, it, it's exciting, and it's a it's good to be a uh, member involved in some of that. So okay. thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay. If not, I will move that we adjourn. <laughs> Motion is made by Mayor Van Oster, seconded by Snuck Commissioner Maxson to adjourn. <laughs> Can I see a show of hands? <laughs>